previously on episode four of The Trident. The women of the Trident exacted their pound of flesh from their predator boss, Howard Black. Yes, did. That's what you did, you asshole! All that stood in the way of their dream of utterly humiliating him was sharing the cringeworthy video on social media. The Trident was back! That's what we thought, anyway. I'm Natalie Burnish, and this is pod dreams. Act 5, The Return of the Trident. A staggering 24,000 days of video are uploaded to the internet daily. 300 hours of video to YouTube alone every minute. And though it may not seem like it based on the content that slips through, there is a giant infrastructure of tens of thousands of content moderators staring at screening panels whose very job it is to screen, flag, and remove videos that feature excessive gore, torture, hate speech, pornography, potential terrorists, and presumably middle-aged men getting their penises shot with one million volts of high pulse frequency. June couldn't wait to see the stats on the video. So we woke up and expected to see some kind of shitstorm, and instead, the video had only 12 views. 12 views? Howard was not a household name. Nevertheless, June was shocked at the lack of traction the video had. So I set out to propagate the video, but I couldn't exactly post it on my Facebook page, right? I had to do everything behind a firewall of secrecy because I couldn't have this traced back to me or to us. What many people don't realize is that there is no such thing as a viral video. Videos go viral for any number of reasons, and a true viral video is rare, like lightning in a bottle. This video, however, did have all the makings of something that would get views in the millions, given enough time. Time they didn't have. While Mary and Lena paced, June worked feverishly to post the video through various back channels onto different platforms. The girl's typing away like something from a spy movie. You know, tap, 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 open corridor one, tap, 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 I'm in, tap, 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 there he is, blow up that image, tap, 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 and then the typing stops. And I just hear June say, shit. June had been flagged. Someone had been looking for me, and I got sloppy, and they found me. The other two panicked, but June had regrown her composure overnight. Stoic and rock steady, she continued to try to repopulate the video online. But to her shock, the video had been removed on every single platform she tried to repost it on. I couldn't post the damn thing. I was running into packet filters and proxy server firewalls like I'd never seen. Someone had figured out a way around all my barriers and found my IP. I could see them pinging me. In all my years of cybertech, I'd never seen anything like this before. I didn't know what was happening. We were being cocked blocked is what was happening. We'd been flagged and removed. Obliterated. Fucking gone. June is convinced that the level of infiltration she witnessed could only have been perpetrated by a giant tech company like the one that was about to announce a $5 billion purchase of monkey teeth within the next 24 hours. Mary and I thought she was being paranoid. No way someone could build this defense so fast. But then this fucking pirate thing shows up on our screen. It was a skull and crossbones icon, I shit you not. Whole thing was like a sci-fi movie. The computer was dead, wouldn't turn back on. We stared at each other like, Fuck. Big brother. That Sunday, three hours later, June's cell phone rang. On the other line was someone claiming to be a criminal lawyer. God, he sounded like a mook straight out of a mobster movie. He's cursing at me and threatening me, throwing everything at me. Oh, and your two friends. And then he ends the call saying, None of you bitches ever go near monkey teeth or my client again. June says she didn't have to relay what the man on the other line had said. He was screaming so loudly, they'd all heard it. 
Mary remembers hearing everyone's heartbeats. We sat there for what felt like an hour. We were scared, even June. This wasn't the work of some screen and panel. This was dark web stuff. Within a matter of 12 hours, the Trident's victory was again turned back on them in the most frightening way. June is certain that Howard must have reached out to someone at the internet giant, who must have then set their cyber goons onto them with the force of a small tech army. They have no way to prove this, but cybersecurity experts have confirmed to us that many tech giants do keep a special elite tech task force ready to pounce in the event of a breach or incriminating video of this sort that they don't want the world to see. Then, about 20 minutes later, my phone rings again. And it's the same Moog, but this time he's calm and friendly. And he wants to meet us at the corner of 89th and Park in 10 minutes. And he tells me to bring the video camera and my laptop, etc. And then this will all go away. And then he says to me with a smile in his voice, If you don't, you'll go away. The three women felt they had no choice. They all volunteered to do the drop-off, but none of them would agree to let the other go alone. So we get to the corner, and there's this really nice-looking kid, probably younger than we are. We were looking for Don Corleone, but he looked like a kid who'd deliver weed to offices like monkey teeth. He says, you have something for me? The Trident gave up their gadgets. We just stood there. The sun was shining after that hellish storm the night before, and we watched this guy disappear with everything. We were beat, defeated. We were done. Done, done, done. Howard Black and his reclusive wife Jacqueline are set to ring the NASDAQ closing bell today as they just minted enough money to play with the big boys and girls. The next day, Monkey Teeth sale was announced. The tech giant's stock went up 9%, and Howard and Jacqueline graduated to the world of the one percenters. Rumors and leaks of acquisitions of this scale almost always circulate before they happen, but not this time. The sale caught Wall Street off guard and is estimated to be in the $5 billion range, which would make it the biggest payday for a dot-com in tech history. How well do you remember that day, Mary? Vividly. We all watched it on CNBC. We were gorging on Ben and Jerry's like the ultimate cliche of a woman cyber scorned. Lena was cracking jokes, so that helped. There he was, smiling like a motherfucker. His dick must have been killing him, but he sure didn't show it. Actually, he did kind of wince once. <laughs> that was funny. Despite all the diabolical plotting and their wild revenge tactics, the Trident's vindication evaded them. Mary was blacklisted in the tech world and had nowhere to turn. There were no writing jobs to be found outside the sphere of online publishing. Without a job and doors closed in her face, she became more and more depressed until one afternoon she finally walked out of June's duplex and back onto a Greyhound bus. How pathetic is that? I just went home. I wanted to dine on New York City, and I did for a while. And then it ate me. Alive. Lena moved back to her mom's house, no longer feeling comfortable in June's posh duplex. She said she wanted me to stay, but... I knew she didn't. We had our at-bat. We were... Uh, what was that word Mary used? Vanquished. But perhaps the hardest hit was June. She wasn't a person who had any familiarity with losing. Money is power. <laughs> Just raw, brutal, uncaring, kill-anything-in-its-path power. And I, more than anyone, should have known that. I stepped outside of my bubble and nearly asphyxiated. It was a low point for all three women. Hello? June. Hi, yeah. It's Natalie. Oh, hi, Natalie. Howard Black wished the story ended here, but it didn't. 
So obviously you didn't give up. Oh, no, I'd given up. (laughs) I mean, I couldn't believe I hadn't had the presence of mind to make a copy of the recording. While your life was being threatened. Yeah, well, yeah, while my life was being threatened. But still, I mean, I should have thought of it. So how did you get the recording back? The 12 views had been scrubbed, right? Yeah, they had. So... Well, let's just say the Cyber Mafia hadn't purged the cash of everyone who'd watched the video. So you're saying you stole it off someone's computer? No, I procured it. Uh, from the SRAM of a proxy server that was associated with someone's IP address. Yeah, uh, translation? (laughs) I stole it. (laughs) But nobody will ever know from where. A shocking and humiliating video has come to light that has social media overheating. The Weenie Roast, as the video is being called, appears to show Monkey Teeth CEO Howard Black's genitals being tased as he was allegedly sexually attacking one of his employees. June's procurement of the footage of her encounter, of course, explains how we were able to play it on this podcast. This time I wasn't taking any chances. I'd plastered the damn video. And of course, this time everyone knew who Howard was. So it spread almost instantly. (laughs) Like gonorrhea, as Jess so eloquently put it. The weenie roast became an internet sensation. Before it was mostly pulled down, an estimated 22 million people saw it. You probably saw it. The video brought an unholy shitstorm on Howard and Monkey Teeth. After it came to light, eight women at Monkey Teeth quickly came forward with allegations of abuse. Jacqueline took a permanent leave of absence from the company and Howard. It broke the terms of their takeover and cost them virtually everything they'd reaped. Mary, who'd locked herself in her childhood room in Lafayette, writing a fictional story of her debacle in New York, couldn't have been happier. What was your book about? Well, initially the book had been a cautionary tale about a girl who gets chewed up in what she calls the second and final tech bubble, but after the video got out, I turned it into a tell-all. Remind us of the title. Uh, It was originally called The Trident, but I thought I'd sell more copies calling it The Weenie Roast. I was right. Ironically, it was well-reviewed on monkeyteeth.com. Well, the rebranded version, (laughs) Trenchmouth.com. Trenchmouth.com? Can you read us some of the review? Glad to. Both funny and tragic, the weenie roast should find a place in every post-millennial's computer bag for him, her, or they to read between Tinder dates and cafe lattes. (laughs) My friend Sarah wrote that. Thanks, Sarah. Lena made out equally well. With June hooking her up with venture capital seed money, Lena jump-started a new business called Mind Eating. Lena describes it as a brain nutrition revolution. With books, seminars, and in-store products, Mind Eating is now worth tens of millions of dollars, and her catchphrase, eat my mind out, is plastered on banner ads, subway ads, and has become part of the pop culture lexicon. Thinking about it now, everything that went down is crazy. Like, we were riding some kind of molly high or something. We were perfect, perfect, perfect together for that one slice of time. And then, just as fast, it was over. But fuck if we didn't win. For once. June was the first of the group to get married. To someone she describes as the sweetest man alive. She told me with pride that he's not rich and has no traces of blue in his blood. Last August, she gave birth to a little girl. I don't know what to say to her. I mean, be vigilant. Be smart. Be safe. Don't be prey. Not to diminish this at all, but for all moms, you need to have the talk. Of course, of course, a different the talk than African American parents have to have with their children, but still, sadly... You owe it to every single girl to tell them to look out. They're after you. Every last damn one of us born female is a mark. A potential target. How do you feel when you look back on the whole insane experience? Um, gosh. I just mixed, really. It was fun. I I love those girls, but my family didn't get it. 
That's kind of an understatement from what I understand. Yeah, I know. Rich family and I smeared our good name, all that. Yeah. June is understating that reaction. The incident completely alienated her from her family and her fortune. June didn't go back to work with her father and told me she's been disowned and disinherited from her family's empire. That must have been horrible for you. It was horrible. I mean, it's a, it's not the money, you know. I just wanted uh, to be heard. <laughs> Do you regret it? Do you wish you'd never been part of the Trident? I will never, I will never ever regret being part of the Trident. I mean, it was the wildest thing I'll ever do in my life, too. And other than my baby girl, the best. <laughs> we got him pretty good, didn't we? Trident was written, directed, and edited by Scott Firestone for the original podcast, Pod Dreams. The role of June March was performed by Laura Faye Smith. Julia Brandy Tolchin played Lena Barrett, and Jessica Liz Adams played Mary Davidson. The role of Howard Black was played by Scott Firestone. Corey Landis played the reporter, and the role of the narrator, Natalie Burnish, was played by me, Brittany Grable. The Trident is a work of fiction and a production of Pod Dreams. Any resemblance to actual events or persons, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. For more stories of aspiration and wish fulfillment, visit poddreams.com. Oh.